Hello my crafty loving friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way, I'm Shelly. For project number one we're going to use some book pages. I got this book from Dollar Tree and we're just going to take a page or two out and rip it up. So if you are opposed to that, sorry and don't watch this next part, maybe skip over it. Uh, these are $1.25 at the Dollar Tree and they're very affordable to be able to use. So I'm just going to rip them into strips and I make them even into smaller pieces. It makes it a little easier to uh, get these on the foam ball which is what I'm going to be doing next. I got this bag of foam balls from I believe Goodwill for a buck or two and I thought they would work great for something and an ornament is what they're going to be. They have the little hanger on them which is very helpful. So I'm just going to take some Mod Podge and put that over the ball in small sections. Put a fairly thick amount on there so when I put the uh, strip of paper on there it will soak in and stick I kind of have to hold it down on one end with my thumb and then as I press down with my brush and Mod Podge and it gets wet, it sticks really well. Now you're going to have spots where it's going to stick up and it's not going to be completely flat, but that's okay. It adds to the rusticness. This is a rustic ornament and we are going to just go with however it comes out. So I'm going to put these on in all different directions, uh, just randomly laying them down and then just wiping on the Mod Podge. Now once I'm done, I just took a my heat gun and I held on to the little hanger and I just heated it a little bit to get it to dry so that I could touch it without it sticking to my hands. Or you could just set it aside and let it dry on its own. This is a little container of um, antique glaze that I got and I'm just using it kind of as a stain just to antique this little ball to make it a little more rustic. Once I put it all over the ball I just go back with a rag that I use and just wiping it back uh, a little bit here and there. So I think that gave it a nice aged look. You have some heavier color in certain spots and lighter in others. Now I'm going to take my jute twine and right at the top where the little hanger is. You could do this at the bottom, but I wanted to do it at the top. It'll be covered up by a bow, so I'm not really worried. So I hot glue the end to the top, and then I wrap it around, and I go around the little hanger. I kind of use that as my anchor point, and I go around again. Now, if that's all you want to do is go around those few times, you certainly can. I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down so it stays really well and I'm going to continue on and split this up again. So I'm going to go down around again and then up around and then down around one more time until it is has all the little sections that I want. There we go, that's all done. I love the look of this twine with the antique paper underneath. I think it looks so cool. So then I'm going to cut off another piece of twine and make that a hanger. I'll just run that right through the hole and make a loop so that it will hang on the tree. So just trim off the ends and now I have a roll of lace ribbon. I think I got this from Dollar Tree a while ago. So I'm just going to make a, an easy sweet little bow for this and pop that on and it's going to make a great rustic little ornament for the tree. Now I was thinking you don't have to have these styrofoam balls. I know they sell 
the uh, any kind of ornaments at Dollar Tree if you can get like a package of them um, you could do that with the plastic little little ornaments as well so now here I'm doing the same thing I'm just using some of the red and uh, tan colored jute twine that this I believe I got from Dollar Tree as well and I'm just wrapping it around and then gluing in, in spots when I feel I need it and then uh, just making it look a little bit different giving it some color. I'm going to give it a little bit of a red ribbon this probably came from Dollar Tree as well and a red and tan hanger and it's all done. On to project number two. So this one I'm going to use this rusty star on this just just regular piece of paper. It's just packing paper. I'm going to trace around the little star to make some uh, star cutouts that I can use for this project. So I did three of them to start and if I decide to do some more I can cut some more out. But I cut them out with some scissors and I'm now going to take some Mod Podge and wipe it on to the top of my stars. Now we're going to grubby these up and make them look like they're rusty stars like I used to make them from. I just give them a good nice coat over the top. Once I get them good and covered I break out my bag of uh, spices that I use to grubby up all my candles and whatever I'm doing at the time. So I'm just taking it and sprinkling it on and then pushing it down with my finger to make sure it gets stuck in the glue really well. Once they're all covered really well I take them out of the plate and empty out the loose spices and then put them back in the plate and I use the tamping method to put the Mod Podge coat over the top to hold the spices on. It really wiping would just wipe it off so I just tamp it until it is good and wet and then it should stay and dry very well. Once I get them all covered I just pick it up and move it so that it doesn't stick to the paper. These are the little pins or the little uh, wooden dowels that I got at Goodwill for four dollars and I brought them home and decided that I would make some little angels with them. So we're going to make some rustic angels. So I'm going to use my antique wax and I'm just going to brush it on and then wipe it back. As you can see it gives it a nice stained look. And I'll show you the difference between the two. There we go, stained and unstained. So it gives it a nice rustic look. So the first thing that's going to go on my little angel is a hanger. And I'm just going to make a loop and put that on the back and glue it right down. Now I made some of these last year with some clothespins. Took the clothespins apart and put them back to back and I made some really pretty angels that way. This year I decided to use these because I got them at a good deal from Goodwill and that's what I envisioned was angels. I've watched Sandy's Country Crafts recently uh, in the past two weeks that she has made a really cute angel as well. I'll link that down in the description below. You need to check out her channel. It's She's got some just the cutest decor that she's done and I really enjoy watching her. So I just have this black and red ribbon that I use. This is wired ribbon. It's nice and wide so it makes nice big wings for this angel. This is what I'm going to be using. And I just fold it up in the middle so that it makes a nice little 
fold and I give it a little bit of glue and then I'm going to glue the back of my angel and put that on there as well. Now while the glue is still kind of soft and warm, I move it around the way I need it and I fluff out the ends of the wings. I want those to be nice and wide and then the middle part I like to be small, to go down small to the middle. I'm going to add my little rusty star to the front of my angel and there we are, a rustic angel for the tree. I've done a few others with different ribbon for the wings and you'll see those next. On to project number three. What is a Christmas tree with rustic ornaments without some rusty bells? So I got this package of nine bells from Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to put it on a skewer. I'm just going to stick that through one of the holes and put a nice coat of Mod Podge all over my little bells. Once they're fully covered in the Mod Podge, I get out my spice mix and I put those, put that all over my little bells. I roll them around. You could probably put them right in the bag and do it, but I didn't really want to uh, get them full of the cinnamon and spice mixture. If you're interested in how to make this spice mixture, I will have the link down in the description to the video that I make my grubby candles and it's the same exact mixture that I use. So I just use my skewer and just swish those around and get them nice and covered. They're not fully covered and if I wanted them to be I could add some more of the Mod Podge and dip them again. Uh, you can dip them as many times as you'd like. I wanted to have some of the gold showing through so it looked like it was just partially rusted and grubby looking. So again with my skewer I'm just going to stick it in one of the holes and hold it down after I cleaned out my plate and I'm going to just uh, tamp the Mod Podge onto the bells. I try not to wipe because if when you wipe with your Mod Podge it does make the grubby mixture come off. So I just tamp that on all over and put a nice coat on my bells. Once that's done, I let them dry a little bit. I hit them with the heat gun a little bit to speed it up. And then I'm just taking some jute twine and I'm running it through the holes, again using my skewer and making the hanger. I hope you liked my simple rustic ornaments for the tree. Don't forget to go down in the links and check out Sandy's Country Crafts and see what she's been up to in her craft room. I'll also have links to the other rustic angels that I've made last year and I'll have that link in the description too. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.